So take a look at this. Trump gave an address at the Detroit, I think it's Consumers Brigade or Economic Club, Detroit Economic Club. And he goes on to start talking about the former years of George W. Bush, Dick Cheney, and even case Barack Obama on the warmongering that they have done. And this is what made Trump so popular back in 2016 when he took this populist stance, when he did the, you know, rhetoric towards Jeb Bush by saying your brother, you know, caused this massacre, invaded Iraq illegally, cost us trillions of dollars in debt, thousands upon thousands of people that died and sacrificed for this war over nonsense, over a lie, and... People were applauding Donald Trump for that. That was such a great moment when he said that in the debate. But rest is, you know, don't get your eggs into this basket here because I'm going to show you how this is all theatrics once again done by Donald Trump. Listen to this. They didn't do that either. So we go in, we blow up countries, and then we leave. We got nothing except dead people all over the place on both sides. How stupid are we? That was a Cheney deal and a Bush. How stupid are we? Not just Democrats. It's both. I'm equally angry at both because we have humanity to think about also. You do. You have humanity to think about. And all of these things, they should have never happened. Ukraine should have never happened. October 7th should have never, should have never happened. If you had smart people at the White House that knew something, a little bit of something, it wouldn't have happened. Think of the world, how different it would be. You wouldn't have Ukraine, Russia. You wouldn't have had October 7th. You wouldn't have this horrible thing that's going on. You wouldn't have had inflation. You wouldn't have had the worst, most embarrassing day in our history. We were leaving Afghanistan. I'm the one that got him down, but I would have kept Bagram. You know why I would have kept Bagram? It was one hour away from where China makes its nuclear weapons. One hour away. So you see, the ideas and the policy are important, but the most important thing of all is the messenger, because I could give that same message to a stiff, and it wouldn't resonate at all. So this is kind of an powerful speech, because this is what made him popular in 2016. This is the populist kind of motives that Donald Trump would, you know, get an audience from is when he goes into, you know, saying that because of Democrats, because of Republicans, because of the deep state, you know, they are the cause of a lot of these situations. We wouldn't have the war in Ukraine right now because of horrible politics done by the deep state. We wouldn't have the October 7th if it wasn't for the, you know, deep state cultivating into that. You know, inflation, cost of living, uh, the Iraq wars in the early 2000s, the Bush-Cheney wars, that Barack Obama took two wars and put them into to seven and expanded the military empire. Now we have over a thousand military bases of the United States all across the world because of the deep state, because of Democrats and Republicans. And for Trump to say something like that, it was kind of impactful. But... Again, don't put your eggs into this basket because we've been fooled by this so many times. Trump is no different. And this is what makes me kind of laugh at the idea of the deep state hating him so much is because he does no different than any other corrupt billionaire. Same with Elon Musk. Same with all. It's because they're a little bit outside the line. They color a little outside the line and say certain things that aren't allowed to be said in acceptable society, like the fact that Syria, we're there in Syria to protect the oil. Most of these, you know, creepy politicians, these bloodthirsty warmongers would tell you that's humanitarian pro uh, process, how we're doing it to defend the people, how this government is so ugly and disgusting and their policies are hurting these people, which is why we got to save these people. Some bullshit line like that. No, Donald Trump made it clear that the purpose and intent of being in Syria was because of those oil reserves, because we want to intact their natural resources and steal it for ourselves, just like every other of these wars. So this is what made Trump kind of powerful in 2016 and really got the spark of the mega movement going. But here's where it downfalls, because Trump does 
whatever his audience, whatever kind of people he surround himself with want him to do. This is what makes him the ultimate entertainer because he can go that and say to a group full of people about how awful these wars are, how I'm mad at the Democrats and Republicans. But if you surround yourself by warmongers, if you surround yourself by, say, Miriam uh, Adelson, um, Shel- Shel- Sheldon Adelson's wife, who is the notorious couple in cause of these wars, they are the bloodthirstiest, bloodthirsty couple on earth that cultivate for more you know attacks of gaza attacks of russia continue to cultivate you know how we need to advance taiwan so they're ready to fight china and do these destructive warfares that donald trump just called out how stupid it is now listen to afterwards after having the meetings with the warmongers and just the the direction of where he takes it We will remove the jihadist sympathizers and Jew haters. We're going to remove the Jew haters who do nothing to help our country. They only want to destroy our country. And we will never let the horrors of October 7th be repeated here on American soil. We will not let that happen. And we will solve the problem that we have. We will remove. So in the last speech at the Detroit Economic summit there he said it was the democrats and republicans to blame it was the politicians to blame for this warfare for october 7th for the the destruction around the world and now because he's comforted himself with these warmongers that are investing into his campaign and his politics because he 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 supports whoever he keeps in his circles Donald Trump did a complete 180 to put the blame on you. Now it's all these college kids that are, you know, Jew haters. And why are they Jew haters? Because they're not supportive of these wars. The same wars that Donald Trump called out Democrats and Republicans for inniting. So this is, again, this is shows the flip-floppery theatrics of politicians and including Donald Trump. This is where, again, I I am not a supporter of Trump and I don't, you know, I, I give credit where credit's due and I defend things that are, I know are ethically wrong, but this is where I call out Trump for being who he is. This is where I say that Donald Trump is not going to be your savior. I, 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 you know, it, it pains me to say that because so many people idolize the lesser two evils they hope for some sort of miracle to happen that there will be some politician out there that will be supportive of them that will actually change the thing change the system within that was the whole false promise of the justice democrats and aoc look how that turned out look at how bernie sanders turned out and now look what trump is doing this is the cultivization of the system and anyone that goes into that system thinking that they're going to change within they are foolish they are wrong they know that they walk in those doors and they are going to grab you and brainwash you and manipulate you and blackmail you to be part of that machine to be part of that machine that oppresses the population that's what they did to aoc that's what they did to bernie that's what they did to the rest of the squad members that's what they're doing to trump now and maybe it's because the I don't know the two possible assassination attempts that now Trump is being buddy buddy with these war criminals they used to call out that maybe hey I guess I should be more establishment like even though that's not my fan base my fan base hates the establishment majority of America hates the establishment and this is where Trump falls on his own face by doing this by being more of an establishment trope by saying stuff like this by pointing the finger at you and saying oh it's the college kids it's 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 regular joes and janes not the politicians that brings us to warfare to use us as as the sacrifice for their endless war games so that was him at the route that that rally there 
And now here's him on the show called Hugh Hewitt. Um, I just think he's like an independent podcaster here. And he's going to suggest that now we bring the DOJ to crack the heads of college kids. Not, not investigate the warmongering government corruption, the military industrial complex, the thing we were warned about for decades before of how heinous and awful and how they're going to take over the world and dominate culture, which is what they're doing right now. No investigation, no, no awareness of that, but we're going to blame college kids. We're going to go after regular people on these campuses because God forbid they are protesting the endless warfare that you used to call out. That was now, let me that turn was to anti-Semitism in the United States. Your, your daughter is Jewish. Some of your grandchildren are Jewish. Your son-in-law is Jewish. Jewish students are not safe in on many American campuses. Your alma mater, my alma mater, Biden and Harris have ignored this. I mean, So this is the common, this is how they elaborate on this. This is why they're tracking down on college protest, camp, uh, campus protests, is they state that Jewish people are not safe in America for this. And that is just insane to say that. For one, no one's really safe in America. Let's just let's put that on the plate. Put that honesty on the plate. No one, regardless of what background, what economic stance, if you are Nowhere in the political sphere, if you're not the upper ups, if you're not a millionaire's daughter or a billionaire's daughter, you are not safe, period. Regardless of who you are. So to out to to put to manufacture the consent to only focus on Jewish people makes you you now you're just victimizing yourself. You are the woke people that want special treatment for and considering that the nation doesn't want you know is against the woke agenda here you are proactively being the woke agenda you want special treatment and special protections for this class of people so i would argue that no one's safe in america and to conflate that and also if it's really as horrific as Hugh Hewitt or other people say it is, where's the proof? Where's the evidence? I, I, I've not seen met much evidence to back these notions. Unless you're talking about being a, a cynic Jew, being against Israel, and having a Zionist scream at their face. Is that what you're talking about? That Jews are not safe? Oh, no, we're not. Don't mention those. But it's Zionists that feel like they are they are hurt. They 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 feel like they're 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 being attacked. And then he tries to bring in the personal politics of well, your daughter and and your grandkids are also Jewish, so you got some personal response. So he's trying to twine Donald Trump into agreeing with this obnoxious agenda here and listen to his response i mean they really have ignored it if you're president will you send the doj to those campuses the office of civil rights from the department of education to enforce the law 100 percent. i mean the law is being broken 100 percent. you wouldn't think you even have this did you ever think two years ago three years ago that you'd, you'd ever have this discussion no it's unbelievable what's happening and when you see these riots, and you see a lot of people, too, but, you know, a lot of the people in that, a lot of those people are Jewish people. You know that. They're Jewish kids. Oh, yeah. They're, they're... Even says there's a lot of Jewish people in these protests. I'm surprised. There's a lot of Jewish people in these protests. So you're going to get the DOJ to crack the heads of people that you know some of them are Jewish to protect Jewish people. Do, again, do you un, do you understand how insane and stupid you're sounding? How you don't have any moral principle to this argument that you are not actually defending Jewish people 
It has nothing to do with Jewish people whatsoever. All it is is defend the war that you think has some sort of conflation to the Jewish faith. It doesn't. Because now you're even saying that there's Jewish people in this protest that you want to storm, you want to have the DOJ crack the heads of these people. <laughs> what happened to Mr. Free Speech? What happened to Mr. Free Speech? We have the First Amendment. We have the freedom to assemble. We have the freedom to protest. We have the freedom to speak our mind in the regards of war. Well, now here's Donald Trump being exactly like George Bush and Dick Cheney and Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Hey, we're just going to crack the heads of peaceful protesters against war because this war we're favorable of and we're going to give some elaborate stupid excuse by saying that it's somehow related to Jewish faith and the protection of Israel and how it's the Holy Land and the Holy Trinity and, and we need it as much as possible without any further explanation or evidence to back any of these claims. But you're going to crack down on American citizens at college campuses holding a poster paper because it goes against your official narrative. Like, how are you any different than George W. Bush back in the day saying you're on our side or the terrorist side? You know, if only Donald Trump had, you know, like a Dixie Chicks band to ban. <laughs> Just, wow. There are some outliers, but, but mostly Jewish clear. students are afraid to be yeah, over on places you, you like Harvard and Penn. That are afraid. Yeah, that's true. And they should be afraid. I've never thought I would see this in my life with the the campus riots and and what they're saying and what they're doing. And they have to put them down quickly. They really have to put them down quickly. They need federal help but, though. But and Columbia that's the Department so of Justice. Horrible. They gotta put them down quickly. We gotta put them down quickly. You know, these are American citizens. It's not like old yeller. You know, you're not putting your rabid dog down that just bit someone. These are people that are witnessing the complete destruction, not defense, destruction of Gaza, the complete destruction of Lebanon, the complete destruction of these Middle East territories that you used to call out. You used to say to George, to Jeb Bush that your brother, George W. Bush, was a complete monster for doing that. To wipe out the entire Iraq population in invasive warfare. And now here's Donald Trump being the advocate for invasive warfare. He's in he's full force for genocide Kamala Harris and Joe Biden are full force for genocide Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is full force sadly Tulsi Gabbard and I agree with her about 85 almost 90 percent of everything she says but she completely falls on her face same with Donald Trump same with all these people when it comes to this issue because they are supporting the people that they keep around their circles. In this case, it's a bunch of Zionist warmongers. He's aiding to the Adelsons. He's surrounding himself with high, big business interests. He's surrounding himself with APEC lobbyists. As Thomas Massey revealed to Tucker Carlson, a lot of these politicians have an APEC lobbyist tracked to their hips. And they dictate everything they do with foreign policy. They wouldn't be able to be in politics and have a say in foreign policy without the ignorious amount of corruption done by the APEC lobby. And they never really mentioned that. Ali Velshi, Velshi tried to do that on MSNBC and he got fired. He got fired for revealing the truth. The insanely obvious truth that so many people know about but because we live in corrupted times because we have such a huge foreign identity that is placating against us our own politics our own country for self-serving interest it's completely blind to people 
And that's how you get someone like Donald Trump who, who could endlessly call out Nancy Pelosi and uh, Chuck Schumer and, and George W. Bush and all these arrogant, you know, warmongers and the destruction, chaos in the Middle East. We wouldn't have any of that. And then all of a sudden be the warmonger himself. That's how he's able to do a 180 because Donald Trump serves as an entertainer for the audience that he cultivates. And if it's a bunch of, you know, non-interventionist anti-war people, then he's going to play to the populist agenda. If it's a room full of Zionist bloodthirsty goons, he's going to play towards them. If it's, it doesn't matter who's in the room, he's going to play to that because that's how much of an entertainer he is. And just like he's doing here, he's trying to entertain Hugh Hewitt being roped into his agenda by saying, yeah, we just need the DOJ to come in and, and put them down quickly. Put them down quickly. A bunch of college kids. <laughs> Instead of actually having a full discussion of why they're protesting in the first place. But they'll never actually reveal that because, God forbid, we have information at a time of war. Um, then people will actually think about this war, have critical skills to analyze the destruction of this war, and maybe realize this war is bullshit. Then maybe realize that all the other wars are bullshit. And maybe then realize that all this is just us being played like pawns to cause chaos and destruction towards each other for a bunch of hedge fund billionaires that really do control the world. Anyway, we should play the rest of this. They need a Department of Justice that will prosecute these people that assault Jewish kids. Because yeah, assault absolutely. is, that, that's real. That's not a protest. Sure. That's not the First Amendment no, no, that's assault. Real. That's real. And they're being assaulted. Uh, but look, it- Again, where's the proof? Where's the evidence? They have not shown any evidence whatsoever of this, of people being assaulted. The most I've seen anywhere, anywhere, is acidic Jews being hit and, and attacked by Zionists. I've seen a lot of that. They don't show that on the news. They don't show any of that on the news, how actual Jewish people are being attacked by Zionists, which is why Zionism is a true evil of anti-Semitism that no one will call out for. But nothing to do with Jewish people being attacked by these protesters. He even said that there's Jewish people in these protests. So you're going to bring the Department of Justice to crack the heads of Jewish people that you're trying to protect for this war? How much, how much more of a maniac could you be? How much, how much more... Can you act like George W. Bush that you once called out? Well, you're on our side or the terrorist side. And right now, these people are terrorists because they're holding up poster paper and making critical points. We don't use points here in America. You got to go full force. These people and their edumacation. All they do is thinkify about the war. They don't do the war. They just thinkify. <laughs> I so there you go, Donald Trump. No, be, no different than what Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. And I love how they say, "Well, they're not doing anything. They're not doing anything." Well. They may not be doing anything with the protests themselves, but they're aiding both sides of this war. They're pushing egregiously for Lebanon to be destroyed while also pledging that we need to have humanitarian aid, which is code word for BlackRock, the CIA, and other investment firms to go into Lebanon and see if there's a business opportunity among the destruction that's what humanitarian aid if you look at the uh the tales of an economic hitman that is what we do with these wars 
That's what humanitarian aid is for. We get all these NGOs, these investment firms, these business uh, business uh, tycoons. They go into these war-torn countries. They scope around and go, huh, how can we make a quick buck off this? So it doesn't matter who you vote for. They're both the same side of the same bloody coin. And Donald Trump... As much of a you know crazed individual he is and colors a bit outside the lines, don't be fooled by that because truly he's no different than any of them. He is no different than George Bush, Dick Cheney, Barack Obama, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, Hillary Clinton. That's why they all used to golf each, golf with each other, go to each other's weddings. Their kids are all best friends. Makes no damn difference. But they want you to say that Donald Trump's the maniac. For doing the exact same thing that the establishment has been doing for decades.